Chevrolet World Series pregame show on Fox, powered by MLB Network. Bush Stadium in St. Louis, where the home team boasts a 21-9 postseason record. And on this night in late October, the visiting Red Sox are faced with a two games to one World Series deficit for the first time since 1975. Tonight, it's game four of the World Series on Fox between the Boston Red Sox and the St. Louis Cardinals. And welcome inside alongside Harold Reynolds, former National League MVP Jimmy Rollins, two-time AL All-Star A.J. Pruszynski, Matt Vaskersian. It was nine years ago to the day, fellas, that the Boston Red Sox finished off a four-game sweep over the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. Two years ago to the day that the Cardinals won that memorable Game 6 against yeah. the Rangers, a game many people call the greatest World Series game ever played. And one day ago to the day that there was the strangest finish to a World Series game that any of us could ever imagine. What? Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> look, so many things had to go wrong to make it right for the Cardinals. Let's go back and take a look at it and break it down for you. Maybe you missed it. If you did, I don't know where you were. Look, infield's drawn in, and if the runners are running on contact, then both guys are going. Unbelievable play by Pedroia. As he looks up, Molina is caught in the rundown, but he doesn't stop. He continues on to go home. Had he stopped, the play's totally different for Salta Lamacchia, the catcher. He comes home with the play. Look at Alan Craig. He just now starts to get ready to break. Instead of breaking with Molina on contact, there's not even a play at third base. Because of his hesitation, here comes the throw to third, and here comes the obstruction. All that is impeding his progression and where he can go. Jim Joyce is looking to draw the ball. He comes back, says obstruction. It's called. It's a continuous play. And because of the path that was obstructed, they get the safe call. And guys, before you know it, we got one of the biggest plays in history. The umpires got it right in my idea. How about you? Now, they definitely got the call right. Um, you know, it's definitely his opinion on whether he felt the guy was going to get there um, without being impeded. Obviously, when he turned back, he seen Craig falling back down. Didn't pull the AJ and step on <laughs> Middle Brooks. But he wanted to. As you know, I've done you know it before. before. Like you said, a lot of things went right and wrong. You know, if it's contact, everybody's breaking. Craig hesitated. Maybe it wasn't contact. Yachty got a read, took off, but it worked out for their benefit. They got the win down up 2-1. It was definitely the right call. Jim Joyce is in a bad position there because he called the right thing, but at the same time, you don't want to see a game end like that. If you're a Red Sox fan, you're like, oh, you messed up the call. If you're a Cardinal fan, you're like, oh, he got it right, he got it right. But Mike Matheny, I think, summed it up best. Alan Craig was just slow enough that he was able to make Salt and Lamaki and throw it to third, thinking he could get him out. Any other guy's probably standing on the base. And then Daniel Nava, what the heck is Daniel Nava doing there? Johnny Gomes said, best double play. Nobody will ever remember because he was safe because of the obstruction call. And I don't think Harold or Jimmy, you make the play Pedroia made. <laughs> Game four uh, and some lineup like changes either. tonight, starting with the Red Sox. Here's how John Farrell aligns the visiting team. Red Sox outfielders, four for 33 with no extra base hits in this series. So Daniel Nava's in the two-hole tonight. Shane Victorino, a late scratch with a sore back. Johnny Gomes, 0 for 8 in the series. He bats fifth in left. David Ross starts behind the plate for Mike Matheny's Cardinals. The left side of his infield is just one for 20 so far. So Daniel Descalzo gets a shot at shortstop instead of B. Cosmo tonight. No Alan Craig in the starting lineup. Mike Matheny did say, however, before the game that he is available off the bench tonight. Yeah, and we've seen this Cardinal lineup before, but I'm more concerned about who's pitching against him. Clay Buckles, they're hoping to get 100 pitches out of him, and Lackey's available. And I didn't like Nava moving behind, not protecting Poppy up to two. What are your thoughts? I agree with that as far as Boss's lineup. I would like to see uh, Bogarts jump up to the second hole. Mm. That way you keep Nava behind Big Poppy. you got a switch hitter. They can't bring in that lefty to try to uh, nullify because you got who hit 300 and can actually put the ball in play against any any pitcher. Now for me though, Ross over Salto Lamaki. It didn't have anything to do, according to John Farrell, with the throw or the plays. He's just looking for a spark. And David Ross has been the spark in the postseason. He's had two great games with Lester. He's done that. It was nothing against Salto Lamaki. John Farrell's looking for a spark, so he just blew it all up like Jim Leland. <laughs> On his couch. David, is David Ortiz still the key for the Red Sox tonight? Is it about getting people the right mix around him? I, I think it's the right mix around him. They're not going to pitch to him again. No way. That, after the success they had last night, they won't do it again. All right, tonight, of course, is game four of the World Series, and stay tuned during the fifth inning for the exclusive final trailer debut of the Hunger Games Catching Fire. It's all part of Catching Fire Sunday right here on Fox. Time now to send it down to the field, and PA announcer... John Hewlett. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps for our national anthem. Performing tonight is Grammy award-winning and multi-platinum country music group, 
Rocks, Rascal Flats. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we've watched we're so gallant lean streaming and the rock is red Bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there No cedars that star-spangled with one of the most memorable plays in postseason history. What will unfold tonight? Joe Buck and Tim McCarver have the call for game four. Next.
St. Louis and welcome to game four of this 2013 World Series on Fox. St. Louis Cardinals up two games to one as we get set to play here on a chilly night in St. Louis. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody. I'm Joe Buck. Tim McCarver is coming right up. What a night last night. What a finish. What a crazy way to end what was a fantastic ball game ending basically on an obstruction call. And as Alan Craig was awarded the next base which just happened to be home plate the St. Louis Cardinals went up two games to one. So now because each side had a chance to set up their rotations the way they wanted to we're down to the fourth starter for each club and Tim McCarver that is uh, sometimes a crapshoot and for the Boston Red Sox they have Clay Buckholtz great regular season numbers but an enigmatic right hander so far and about uh, half the people in New England would love to know what kind of Clay Buckholtz they're getting tonight will it be the guy that rattled off nine wins in his first 11 starts the first two months of the season or a guy who was on the disabled list came back in September at three starts and then three starts in the postseason that have been OK. He says he's got one good start left in that right arm. We'll see. Red Sox need it down two games to one. Lance Lynn on the other side. He's been enigmatic as well. Cardinal fans don't know what they're going to get out of their right hander. However he did get things back in order from the middle of September on. He's two and one this postseason. There's your matchup. It's game four the World Series next on Fox. Game one of this World Series defensive miscues dominant pitching by John Lester an eight to one Red Sox win then it was the kids for the Cardinals in game two starting with Waka then Martinez and then Trevor Rosenthal 4 2 St. Louis last night craziness here with an obstruction call against Will Middlebrooks Alan Craig awarded home plate and the Cardinals win game three by a final of five to four. And so who knows what we'll see here tonight in what's been a thrilling World Series with St. Louis up two games to one 52 degree night 
and a matchup of Lance Lynn and Clay Buck Holtz. The World Series on Fox is sponsored by MasterCard, preferred card of Major League Baseball since 1997. So who do the Red Sox have in their lineup? A late change. Jacoby Ellsbury leads off in center. Daniel Nava is moved up to the number two spot. Shane Victorino is out with a bad back. Dustin Pedroia hits third at second base. David Ortiz cleans up. Johnny Gomes then gets the start with Victorino out. He's in left with Nava in right. Xander Bogart, Stephen Drew, David Ross is the catcher with Saul Tolomakia sitting on the bench. And Clay Buckholz is pitching and batting ninth. The opening pitch will be brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. It'll be the right-hander Lance Lynn, a 15-game winner during the regular season. There are his numbers during the postseason. While Tim gives you the scouting report for coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune in to Fox Deportes. Those two starts, one against Pittsburgh, the other against the Dodgers, his winning, his winning percentage is very surprising. And his curveball is a work in progress, even though that... that Start against the Pittsburgh Pirates. His curve worked early in the game, and Mike Matheny loved that and thought it was a good sign. Jacoby Ellsbury first up. First pitch up there hacking. That is something rare from the Red Sox as they love to make pitchers work. We talked about it. We talked about it during the regular season. We talked about it this entire postseason. To me, if there's one guy, John Farrell's club, can get under the skin of as far as starters for the Cardinals it's Lance Lynn he's had a tough time channeling his emotions during the course of the season he was on a very short leash leading into middle September they were about to take him out of the rotation and he has at times had trouble keeping distractions away a pop up starts the night this Castle hauls it in and Ellsbury is now three out of 13 in this World Series. Let's take a look at the defense. It's Matt Holliday in left, John Jay in center with Carlos Beltran in right. Around the infield, it's Freeze, Descalso instead of Cosma. Matt Carpenter at second, Matt Adams at first, and Yadier Molina doing what he always does for the Cardinals, the catching. And here's Daniel Nava batting in the number two spot for the first time this postseason. That's the one thing we don't put on the scouting report is the stability of a pitcher. But Mike Matheny telling us before the game, the Cardinals laid down the law to Lance Lynn. Straighten up or, or you're not going to be in the rotation. And he did. He's got that mid-90s fastball. He starts Nava with a strike. Ellsbury went after the first two pitches. Dustin Pedroia on deck. That's outside. One ball, one strike. Nava has hit 343 over his last 31 games. He hit well last night. In fact, got a big base hit for the Red Sox in the sixth inning that tied the game. Here's a 1 1. That's into left. It's foul. And it's out of play. That's strike two. Home plate umpire tonight is Paul Emmel. Bill Miller at first base. Jim Joyce at second. John Hirschbeck is the crew chief. He started behind the plate. Then they go out to right and work their way back around. Mark Wegner in left and Dana DeMuth was at the plate last night. He's out and right tonight. The rotation from third to second for Jim Joyce. He is the umpire that called the obstruction last night at third base. Terrific umpire. Marvel's career. And in the words of the manager of the Red Sox, they got the call right. I don't like the rule, but they got the call right. Here's a one-two. A little high and tight, two and two. We were talking about it before the game, Joe. Uh, I, I think that rule has to be revisited by the nine members with Sandy Alderson as the chairman of the rules committee. And I think it will be this winter. That intent to me has got to be changed to an umpire's decision. There are a lot of rules that either imply directly or indirectly that umpire's decisions uh, often or an umpire's judgment <laughs> often uh, if, if an umpire in this particular case thinks obstruction a guy in, a guy obstructed 
and impeded a guy going to the next base, he could call it. Otherwise, no call. That's inside. The count's full. Yeah, the question was about intent, and as the rule stands now, intent is irrelevant. If you impede the runner's progress, whether you meant to or not, the next base is awarded. One out, nobody on. 3 2 pitch. Hard hit right at Adams to the bag. Two out. Ken Rosenthal is with us as he is every night in October. Can you talk to Joe Torrey about that very rule? All right, Kenny, thank you. With two out, nobody on. The batter will be Pedroia, who is three out of 11 in this World Series. Dustin digs his way in. And if you are just watching the World Series and watching baseball, maybe the first time this year, first of all, welcome. Secondly, you're looking at a guy at the plate who has this uncanny ability to make plays when they matter the most plays that are eye popping the plays he's made defensively what he does at the plate I know we talk about it a lot during October but even the play he made to start that chain of events last night in the ninth inning was just stunning otherwise the game's over there's no obstruction that's a game winning hit by Str John Jay. strike two on Pedroia Lynn trying to retire the side in order to start his night. And he does. Bottom of the first inning rolls in in St. Louis. Clay Buckholtz. What will he give the Red Sox here tonight? Off to work he goes. Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Let's do the starting lineup for the Cardinals, brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Matt Carpenter leads off at second base. Carlos Beltran bats second and right. Matt Holliday hits third. Then it's Matt Adams, Yadier Molina, John Jay, David Freeze is batting in the seventh spot. 
Daniel Descalso gets the start at short. And Lance Lynn pitches, bats ninth, and here is play Buck Holtz, who has three no decisions this postseason. And he has not gone into the seventh inning on any of those three starts. I'll tell you, watching him warm up, Joe, he's on the DL for three months. Uh, no two pitches the same when he's healthy and how long will he last but just watching him warm up he was not throwing the ball hard throwing change ups curve balls unlike Buckholz. first time for the Cardinals to see play Buckholz. he can be a tricky right hander when he's right when he's healthy he's got front of the rotation stuff and he proved that this year going 12 and one overall. And winning nine of his first 11 games. Here's a 1 0 pitch. That's on the outside part, ball and a strike. An 86 mile an hour fastball and an 88 mile an hour fastball. That's not Buckholz. Here's the 1 1 from the right hander. Carpenter takes a strike over the inside part, strike two. Well, however, he has to get through this game. He'll have to try and figure out a way with his team down two games to one. Making the comment during this past week, I've got one more start in me. You can take that one of two ways. Here's a shattered bat and a ground ball to Pedroia. One up, one down. And for more on Buckholz, down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, Clay Buckholz did tell me yesterday his biggest concern for tonight, he'll get to the mound and his stuff won't be any good. Now, Red Sox manager John Farrell did tell us if Buckholz isn't at ease, he'll start to slow down on the mound. His catcher, David Ross, said if that happens, he'll jump up, get Buckholz refocused, and try to simplify the mental aspect of the game for Buckholz tonight, guys. All right, Aaron, well, we talked about it as Beltron stands in with one out, nobody on, and a big shift on the infield. Strike one. We talked about it during the ALCS. Buckholz at times can have a pace to his pitching that is so slow, almost lethargic. And it's something that the Red Sox talked about with him during spring training. He was good right out of the gate, but when he is not comfortable, doesn't trust his stuff, his tempo slows down. He's got the first two outs to start the night. The ground ball pop up. Beltron is retired, and the batter will be Matt Holliday. And we'll give you tonight's four keys to the game. It is really tough for Boston, but they've got to bounce back tonight and win this game. And for the Cardinals, uh, they want innings out of Lance Lynn. John Farrell on your left. Mike Matheny had to like his pitching matchups really throughout. But especially after game one, pretty even matchup between Wainwright and and John Lester but then if you had to pick one side or the other with who had at least healthier pitchers you would lean towards St. Louis and sure. it's played that way with Waka last night Kelly and tonight Lance Lynn against Clay Buckles. Red Sox talk about find a way. Clay Buckholz has to find a way here tonight in game four. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Matt Holliday. One ball, one strike. But nothing at 90 miles per hour or better yet. And Not yet. Something you've talked about before, Jim, that you can get too hung up on the radar gun and velocity but it is and it can be a telltale sign for a guy who's not right. Yeah like tonight for, for a guy like Buck you're right. Two out nobody on a one one pitch is inside. We understand Ken Rosenthal's microphone was not working in the top half of the first inning so Ken has memorized exactly what he said <laughs> he will repeat it verbatim. We heard it. <laughs> You guys can't believe what you missed. That's on the inside corner in the count two and two. Holiday has had a good World Series. Five out of 13 with a home run, four RBIs. Last night had three RBIs. 2 2 pitch. Just got a piece. 
Aaron Andrews mentioned David Ross, the catcher for the Red Sox. He, to me, is the right kind of guy to get Clay Buchholz focused into this game and try and squeeze the most out of him. It'll be rare because David catching tonight, he'll catch Lester again tomorrow night. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball is low. And the count full. Yeah, David with a lot of experience. Jared Salta Lamacchia last night has had a cup of a couple of uh, inopportune throws to third base. The bobble at home plate in game two. Here is a 3 2 pitch. Holiday grounds to Bogarts. Long throw. And the stretch by Ortiz. A perfect first inning for Clay Buckholz. Good start for the Boston right hander after one in game four. No score. Some of the faces, the smiles, the swings of the guys involved in game four of this World Series. Second inning rolls in, no score. Ortiz, Gomes, Bogarts coming up against Lance Lynn. Breaking ball misses, ball one. David Ortiz is five of eight in this World Series. Last night had an important hit against the left hander Randy Choate. 1 0 pitch. Pulled foul. You can see how the infield plays Ortiz to pull the outfield deep and pretty much straight away. The infield for the Cardinals not as dramatic as a lot of American League teams that play three guys on the right side. Somewhere Joe Madden is laughing at this shift. <laughs> so simple. Yeah. Here's a 1 1 manager of the. Tampa Bay Rays. That's outside two and one.
Getting a chance to play in the field is David Ortiz. Typically the DH. And a kick save by Lynn. Molina tries to make the play too late. And a rare infield hit for David Ortiz on a shattered bat. Leadoff man is on. I think it hit the heel. I don't know which one, but of Lance Lynn. He had turned around. The ball hit the heel. Came about halfway back to home plate. Broken bat. It hit the heel. Now Molina, obviously on a ball back to the mound, you're not going to go charging to the mound. But Molina said, oh, if I don't get it, nobody will. And the throw's too late at first. You could see with that last replay, with the shift on the infield, the shortstop Descalso was right behind Lynn, waiting for that ground ball, which obviously wasn't hard hit. But once it hit the shoe, the left heel of Lance Lynn, it goes for infield base hit. A rare infield base hit. One on, nobody out. The batter is Gomes. He takes a strike. Johnny Gomes was not scheduled to be in the lineup tonight. Originally, it was the typical look at top with Victorino batting second. And again, it was Nava batting the number five spot as he did last night. But Victorino's out with a bad back. So Nava is batting second. And Gomes is hitting fifth behind Ortiz. He grounds one to third. Free starts it. Carpenter in the middle, two out. Another broken bat, and a good sign for Lance Lynn and the Cardinals. Because the Red Sox not centering the ball against Lynn. Gomes jam. Easy double play. Nice turn by Carpenter. And it will bring in Xander Bogarts. So Ortiz gets the hit. He is erased on the double play ball. And Bogarts, who is two for ten in this World Series, one of those two hits coming last night late. Bouncer up the middle in the eighth inning to tie it. I guess Trevor Rosenthal. 94 from Lance Lynn, strike one. Earlier in the night, Bogarts had tripled and scored the first run for the Red Sox in what was a classic game with the most atypical finish ever yeah, in the history of the World Series ever. This being the 109th World Series the game ending on an obstruction call at third. Here's a 1 1 two balls and a strike from Lynn. When Bogarts got the game tying hit, he became the youngest player in World Series history. And he did it in the eighth inning to deliver a game tying RBI in the eighth inning or later. And all this young stuff is good. Xander Bogarts will shed the young part of his description and just become a good player in this league, you would think, for a long time. Two out, nobody on the 2 1. Is chopped to Descalso. She was left. Lynn faces three. We go to the bottom of the second here in St. Louis. Game four, no score.
Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Bottom of the second rolls in in St. Louis. Play Buckholz back to the hill. First inning comparison. Lance Lynn threw 13 pitches, all over 90. Did so with the fastball. Buckholz threw 13, all under 90. And here's a ground ball, hard hit, but right at Pedroia. One pitch, one out in the second. After the first inning, when Buckholz got through the Cardinals 1 2 3, he went out to start his warm ups for the second inning, and that first one just floated in after there was plenty of discussion down in that dugout with the catcher, David Ross. And the manager John Farrell. Yeah, just think about how many times you've seen a pitcher warm up before an inning, and how many times he's thrown a ball like that. Almost, almost never. In the David Ross and John Farrell interview or conversation, was very, very interesting. With one out, nobody on. Here's Molina. He hits one into right center field. That ball's going to go to the wall, and Molina will dig into second base with a one-out double. You mentioned Ellsbury swinging at the first pitch. Both Cardinal hitters here in the second inning have swung at the first pitch. One for an out. Molina with a double. A lot of pitchers, when a guy swings at the first pitch, they think the next guy's going to be taking automatically, not Molina. That pitch was over 90 miles an hour for the first time tonight. Radar readings said 94 from Buckholz, but it went for a double into right center. Now John Jay, runner at second, one out. Jay takes a ball up and away. Last thing to be said, then we'll let it play out for a moment. The Boston bullpen is stocked tonight. They've got a long man in Dempster. The left-hander Dubron, even though he pitched last night, is available, as is John Lackey. The game two starter. This is his side day. And they've held him back in case they need him tonight. So there are a lot of options out there, including Lackey. Really the only guy not available to start this is last night's starter Peavy. There's Lackey. And unless a dire circumstance, tomorrow night starter Lester. Here comes a 2 0 pitch. It's high for ball three, three and oh. John Farrell will make a quick decision, obviously, tonight. Talking to David Ross and observing Buckholz, if he thinks he does not have it, he'll go to the bullpen immediately. Here is a 3 0 pitch. Instead, Buckholz spins and looks back at Molina. Two time All Star, 29 year old right hander Clay Buckholz gets a strike. Clay pitched a no hitter as a rookie. Red Sox shut him down at the tail end of that, lat that year in 2007, and even though the Red Sox won it all, he was not a part of the postseason. Getting his first taste of the World Series, bringing home a 3 1. To John Jay. Full count. Little cut uh, fastball. Jay can't catch up. Adams grounded out. Molina doubled into right center. It was 3 0 on Jay. It's now 3 2. Buckholz brings it. Jay fouls it. It's a rematch of game one tomorrow night. John Lester. Take on Adam Wainwright. Lester so good in game one. 
He can't throw the ball any better than he did in game one. Seven and two thirds, no runs, five hits, eight strikeouts. Here's another 3 2 from Buckholtz. Jay takes a walk. And with two on and one out, here's David Freeze, one for eight in this World Series and hitting just 178 for the postseason. Talk about positioning the outfielders. Uh, the one thing that Victorino did last night, first game here in St. Louis, but he's played here a lot. He played David Freeze toward the line in right field. Daniel Nava started in the left yesterday, and sometimes when you switch from left to right, you're not sure about your positioning. May need help from the bench, but he's not as close to the line really as he should be for David Freeze, who has great power to right field. First pitch. Ball one. Freeze one home run, just four RBIs this entire postseason. 15th game of the postseason for St. Louis. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Instead, Buckholz steps off. That deliberateness that you were talking about earlier when Clay Buckholz goes to the stretch, very deliberate. Here's a 1 0. Strike one. Breaking ball from Buckholz drops in. Freeze a double play ball candidate, but also a guy who typically has loved October hitting. And now in the hole one and two. Molina with a double, then a walk to Jay. All this talk about velocity, it's not to say that you can't win in the big leagues with 88, 89 miles an hour. There are guys who do, but it's not typical Clay Buckholz. We talked about it uh, during the LCS. Clay Buckholz, a touch and feel pitcher. And John Farrell telling us that the fact that he plays the guitar means that his touch and feel is a lot better than most pitchers that he handles. Here's a one two. That strike three is a tailed back for out number two. No Cardinal hitter has ever faced Clay Buckholz. So they're not used to the movement of Buckholz at ball tailing back. A two seam fastball at tail back over the outside corner. Actually, more of the plate than the corner. And so now, with two on, two out, the batter will be Descalso. The numbers aren't good this postseason. He has not driven in a run, but hit 338 this season with runners in scoring position. Batting with two on, two out. Trying to put the Cardinals on top here in the second. Ball one outside. Descalso more of the utility player for the Cardinals this season can play anywhere on the infield. A valuable piece of this puzzle for Mike Matheny. The 25 man roster. Here's the 1 0. 2 0. When we talked to David Ross earlier in this postseason, when he talks about his pitchers, he doesn't refer to the pitcher by name or calling him the pitcher. He says, I or we are going to throw a hit or a certain pitch. He's in this with Buckholz trying to get him out of a jam in the second. Here's a 2 0. Under the hands, 2 and 1.
Descalso trying to deliver a hit for the Cardinals. He goes to the left side. It's Drew in there for his defense and makes a nice backhanded stop. And a throw across his body for the out. Let's go to the third inning in game four. Red Sox, Cardinals, no score. by Ford. Only Ford gives you EcoBoost, fuel economy, and a whole lot more. Aerial coverage of tonight's game provided by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Third inning, Lance Lynn. Gave up a leadoff infield hit to Ortiz in the second, then got a double play ball off the bat of Gomes. And here is Stephen Drew, who is hitting 091 this postseason. Four for 44. Strike one. He had a terrific second half of the season, though, batting 281 his last two and a half months. He's got pop, eight triples, 13 home runs. Boston hoping he can snap out of it these last four games. Pops it up. On the infield, playable for freeze, and that is out number one. All right, we didn't hear it the first time. Well, we heard it. Tim and I heard it. Aaron Andrews heard it, but I guess nobody around the world heard it. What would you say back in the first inning about Joe Torre and the interview and the talk you had with him? Well, Joe, first of all, it's all good. I'll be leaving Fox at the end of the World Series to join a pantomime troupe. <laughs> Great. But as for Torre, what he told me was that he Major League Baseball will indeed review the obstruction rules, specifically focusing on the question of intent. He said it's only fair. That play was so unusual last night that it merits a review. And that's what Tim was saying in the first inning, that baseball should review it. Well, baseball will. Doesn't mean the rule will be changed, but it will be looked at. Yeah, and it's funny that it's a rule that's been in there for a long, long, long time. And here we are. I mean, just going around talking to players. The two managers, members of the media, whoever, nobody ever seen that. No. To end a ball game, certainly. 
and it's worth reviewing. Here's another broken bat. That's the third of the game against Lance Lynn and two strikes on David Ross. We said it earlier. It's a good sign for Lynn because Mike Matheny saying that uh, when you're and he knows a little bit about catching but he's talked to Yadier Molina and Lynn one of the heaviest sinkers on the staff. Think of the young guns down in the bullpen they throw those 98 99 mile an hour fastballs. With Lance Lynn it's the opposite. It's a low sinker. As Mike Matheny described it a bowling ball. Yeah. Type sinker that just comes in heavy. Here's the 2 That's a little bit up at 96 from Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn is just 26 years old. 39th overall pick in 2008 came up in 2011. Part of the postseason then. That's a foul ball. 2011 Lance Lynn was one and one in the regular season then pitched in five games in the NLCS five games in the World Series made two starts in the NLCS last year against the Giants was 0 and 1 and so far this year during the postseason 2 and 1 one of the wins coming in relief being one of the NLCS a strikeout for out number two and the second strikeout for Lynn. Strong defense matters most in October. Catch the top defensive plays and enter for a chance to win an all new 2014 Chevy Silverado at ChevyBaseball.com. Two out, nobody on. Clay Buckholtz, who is one for three in his career, is getting his first plate appearance since June of 2012. Waits and takes a strike. Throws right, bats left. Strike two. Usually if organizations have a very talented right-handed pitcher, they discourage left-handed batting in the minor leagues because it exposes that right arm. They want to get that hit. That's your business partner. Got a pad on that right pitching elbow, the 0-2 pitch. It is up high from Lynn, ball one. St. Louis in the third inning will start their frame with their pitcher, Lance Lynn. Then back to Carpenter and Beltron. Pitch number 34 on the way. A strikeout to end the inning. Three strikeouts for Lynn. Bottom of the third rolls in in game four, no score.
Big awards to the big deals. Nobody covers the offseason like MLB Network with three primetime shows and TV's only morning show dedicated to baseball. It's on MLB Network beginning Monday, November 4th. Lance Lynn, the Cardinal pitcher, will be the first to deal with Clay Buchholz, who got around a one-out double and a walk last inning by striking out Freeze and getting Descalso on a ground out. Here's Lynn, who had four hits during the regular season, four of 54, with two RBIs. Breaking ball for a strike. Cardinals over games two and three became the first team in World Series history to win two straight games by scoring the winning run on an error in the seventh inning or later. Happened at Fenway Park on the error by Breslow. Really two errors on that particular play. One on Saltalamacchia, the other on Breslow. And then last night, the throwing error, which led to the obstruction led to the end of a long night fun night interesting night of baseball in game three one and two the count on Lynn here it comes from Buckles two and two That's foul. Had a chance to visit with Mike Matheny during the break. The Cardinal manager, 43 year old in his second season, came to the Cardinals, became their manager last year with no prior experience managing at any level other than Little League. And what a job he's done. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Lynn spoiled it. Talking to David Freeze before the game about Matheny and David saying that Mike Matheny is so oh respected. God, he doesn't talk a lot, but when he talks, they listen. And he talked plenty after a sloppy game one at Fenway Park. He did. Here is a 2 2 pitch from Buck Holtz. It's down and away. And a full count. So Lynn is not. Just rolling out there and willing to become an easy first out here in the third inning. He's at least making Buckholtz work. And he strikes him out. Lynn headed down to first, did not agree with the call. He's the first out in the third inning, and here is our visit with Mike Matheny. First question about Lance Lynn. And if he likes what he's seeing out of his right-hander tonight. Yeah, he's got a good feel. We talked about this before the game. He has a good feel for that sinker. It's a, it's a pretty impressive pitch. He's got a lot of life. It's, uh, it's heavy and it's hard. He's got a lot of life and a lot of dead bats. We've already seen three broken bats against Lynn in the first three innings. Yeah, he's got that uh, that groove working where he's working the third base side. But he's able to use the other side as well. And it looks like he's going to come to good breaking ball. So he's going to have to mix it up. He knows that. But right now, uh, he's going to pitch off of that sinker since it's working. Mike, there's a certain rhythm between a pitcher and a catcher that's very important, right? The cadence. Yeah, yeah, you should know, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, and he and Yadi, uh, Yadi does such a good job with that with all of our guys. He has an idea. They have a game plan going in, but Yadi's got such great instincts, and they trust him. So if he senses something back there, he sees something a little bit out of the normal as far as you know, having extra good stuff for one particular pitch, he'll stick with it. Mike, thanks for the time. All right, guys. Mike Matheny was the starting catcher for the Cardinals when they lost to the Red Sox four straight back in 2004. Breaking ball misses to Matt Carpenter in the count two and one. One out, nobody on. Lynn struck out looking. And now a ground ball. Base hit into right center off the bat of Matt Carpenter. It's kicked in right center, and Carpenter will make it to second on what will be likely a hit and an error out in right center. Matt Carpenter did not break stride rounding first. He was in a perfect position to see Ellsbury boot the ball the ball right between his legs he just kept right on going actually off the heel of the glove backed up by Naba and an error on 
Jacoby Ellsbury. That ball took a bad hop, came up. They had a football game in this stadium. They had to resod Bush Stadium. They had a soccer match here at Bush Stadium. So they've had to replant and resod this grass a couple of times this season. Runner at second, one out for Carlos Beltran. Ball one down and in. So a single, then E8. And for Ellsbury, his first error of the postseason, he made three during the regular season. That ball took a bad hop. Runner at second, one out, and a 1-0 pitch from Buckholz. That's into right center of base hit. Carpenter hesitated. They're going to bring him to the plate. He'll score anyway. And the Cardinals lead one to nothing in the third inning of game four. The reason Carpenter hesitated, it was a line drive, and you can't see how close that second baseman is to the ball. So a momentary hesitation. Third base coaches are always saying right there. Then he breaks, realizing that a late break, he's going to score anyway, and he does. Carlos Beltran in his first World Series delivers and puts St. Louis on top here in the third inning. In this postseason, he is now 8 of 10 with runners in scoring position. Holiday got under it. Into left center field. It's Johnny Gomes for out number two. Remember, we said during the first time through the order that none of these Cardinal hitters had seen Clay Buckholz. Second time around, two base hits, one by Carpenter, the other by Beltron. You could see the reaction by Matt Holliday after. Yeah, he just missed it. Just getting under that pitch. I think the guy at the plate right now is the most dangerous hitter for Buckholz to face because he loves the stuff Buckholz features. Low fastballs. Matt Adams, a low ball hitter. And if you can't come inside on him, that's a severe disadvantage. That's down ball one. Back to back hits and error mixed in. And St. Louis leading one to nothing here in the third inning. Adams grounded out. His first time up. He's got one postseason home run. He had 17 during the regular season and did so. Not playing every day. Only 296 at bats. Here's a 1 0. In for strike one. Adams with that protective guard on his right elbow. As he waits for a 1 1 from Buckholz. Off the end of the bat, Ellsbury broke back, comes in, and the inning is over. An error factors in. One run, two hits, an error, and a man left. And up two games to one here in game four. The Cardinals lead it 1 to nothing as we go to the fourth.
you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. And by the Galaxy Note 10.1, the next big thing is here. Pleasant night weather-wise here in St. Louis, top of the order for the Red Sox. As Lance Lynn has faced the minimum through three, got a double play ball off the bat of Gomes after an infield hit by Ortiz. Ellsbury first up, he popped up his first time, and both at bats, he's gone after the first pitch. Strike one. Ellsbury, then Nava, then Pedroia. Red Sox started tonight hitting 188 as a team in this World Series against the Cardinals. After hitting 201 in the LDS and LCS. Here's an 01. This was the top run producing ball club in the big league, scoring 853 runs, by far the top scoring offense. Here's a 1 1. 2 and 1. Ellsbury, a big part of that, hitting 298. Stole 52 bases. The Red Sox have not been able to even attempt a stolen base in this World Series against Molina and the Cardinals. On 1 3 2 count, they ran against Molina, but the ball was put in play, so no stolen base. Here's a swing and a miss, 2 and 2. There are the numbers during the postseason. And all the strikeouts. Three more tonight. That's out of play. So 134 strikeouts this postseason for the Red Sox. The record. And obviously now with more rounds during the postseason, you're going to get a team from the time where there's a divisional series round or play in games but the record the 2010 Giants with 142 so they're approaching that already as we work here in game four of the World Series here's a 2 2 inside a full count Side for Adams. Feeds Lynn, one out. Earlier this evening, representatives from MasterCard presented a generous $4 million donation to Stand Up to Cancer Scientific Advisory Committee members, co founders, and special guest, celebrity ambassador Eric Stone Street. The funds were raised with the help of fans and cardholders through the Dig In and Do Good campaign. Go to MasterCard.com slash do good to learn more about how you can get involved. Later on in this game four, we will have a moment for stand up to cancer here in this ballpark and on television. With one out, nobody on. Here's Nava. Grounded out his first time up to the right side. Big piece of the speed at the top of this lineup is missing when Shane Victorino is not in there. Nava during the regular season did not steal a base while Victorino had 21. Red Sox as a group had 123. Fourth highest total in baseball. Here's a 1 0. Ball one strike. Stolen base attempts. Nine teams have gone through a World Series without a stolen base attempt in the 108 previous editions of the Fall Classic. That's surprising. That there are that few. Crowd is trying to climb in it with a count of one and two. St. Louis up on an unearned run. 
scoring against Buckholz in the bottom of the third. That's into right center. Jay to his left. Two out. Mentioned Shane Victorino is not in the lineup tonight. For more on why he is not, exactly what's wrong, let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Yeah, this has been a back injury he's been dealing with since he crashed into the wall in Fenway, guys, in May. And from what I'm hearing from the team, it's a chronic thing. It flared up. He was having treatment on it, still having treatment on it. And they said they think he could be available to come in at some point when he pops out and tells John Farrell he's ready to go. But getting treatment on it. We've seen him all series long, guys. He's been wrapped up like a mummy with everything he's been dealing with, from the ribs to the leg. He got hit yesterday. Two out, nobody on. Pedroia fouls it back. The first injury of the lower back to Victorino this year was on May 12th while playing the Toronto Blue Jays. We showed that clip in game one. Shane Victorino running into the wall right near the ace ticket sign at Fenway Park. One ball, one strike on Pedroia. He struck out his first time. Lance Lynn focused tonight. He misses high, two and one. Trying to face the minimum through four innings. Cardinals know and Mike Matheny knows the importance of splintering Pedroia and Ortiz. Hope that Pedroia can make the last out of an inning and have Ortiz leading off an inning. Here's a 2 1. That's out of play down the right side. 2 and 2. Tell you, Joe, that's one of the most important things about catching in the National League. Because you have the pitcher hitting ninth, and hitting, period. Working a lineup. I don't think we even talk about it enough, but it's very, very important, and nobody does it better than Yadier Molina. Add that to his list of superlatives. Two and two the count with two out, nobody on. Struck out four. And as the Cardinals bat in the bottom of the inning with Molina set to lead it off, it's one to nothing Cardinals. Up two games to one in this World Series.
Yadier Molina to lead it off for St. Louis. The number five hitter in the lineup for Mike Buffini. One to nothing Cardinals on top and Molina's jam. Good pitch by Buckholz. And Molina who doubled. His first time up and was stranded is a quick and easy out. Here in the fourth inning. Our visit with manager John Farrell. First was about Clay Buckholz and now he should be pleased with the way his right hander is throwing tonight. Yeah, you know, Joe, I think more than anything, he's keeping the ball to the bottom of the strike zone, uh, putting the ball on the ground, and unfortunately, you know, the ball checks up on Ellsbury there on Carpenter. Love to go to second base and the other ground ball, which maybe for playing the shift with the man at first base, it turns into a double play rather than the run scored. Your your team has got such a good attitude about it. It has all season long. You set that tone in spring training. How did you feel the club came back today after the way that game ended last night? You know, Joe, much like... Any challenges we face throughout the course of the year, we've got a. Our group has got such good internal leadership here that what happened yesterday stays there. Uh, once that early work started on the field today, the BP began and the first pitch is thrown. Uh, we can't go back there last night, and uh, we're looking forward to this game and trying to figure out a way to get this one in. And you're looking for some hits here tonight. <laughs> they would help, I can tell you that. <laughs> Thanks, John. Okay, guys. Thanks, he has been a frustrated manager with the way his offense. Has been shut down in this World Series. Only one hit tonight through four innings. Lance Lynn has struck out four and has faced the minimum as John Jay takes high. The count's gone to 3 0 from Buckles. Jay walked his first time. And does so his second time. Let's give you how Clay Buckle started the season 9 0. That ERA led the big leagues. Then he goes on the disabled list with a neck strain in the middle of June. He missed 82 games. It was a neck shoulder issue for Clay Buckholz. He came back September 10th. Last four starts was great. But so far in the postseason, whether it's fatigue or that dead arm phase, whatever he's going through, he's had three no decisions in the postseason and has not gone past six. Here's Freeze. Strike one. Clay Buckholz, a guy who Finished the seventh inning in 10 of his 16 regular season starts. He's not been able to do that so far in October. Here's a no one to freeze. Totally fooled on the pitch in the count, nothing and two. Two at bats so far at David Freeze. Not like you. He took a call strike three his last time up. He takes the first pitch slider, swings at a bad pitch off the plate. Jay stole 10 bases during the regular season. He takes his lead as the third pitch to freeze is outside ball one. on one and two a slow grounder to short the flip to Pedroia for the out and they can't turn the double play Mike Matheny now is going to go argue saying that Pedroia was off the bag what a flip by Drew never touched his hand but was Pedroia on the bag because the ball was not hit well I couldn't tell Remember talking to Mike Matheny, Tim, after game one. And I'm with you. It's tough to tell with those two angles if when Pedroia came down, his foot was on the bag. But Matheny said Pandora's box has been opened with a conference that they called. Good call. It looked like he got it with the left foot. Yeah, it did. And he said, I'm going to be asking for conferences when I get the opportunity. He went out there and talked to Jim Joyce. Let's take another look and watch the left foot, which leaves the frame. It looked like he got down on the bag as Drew got the force out at second for out number two. 
Yeah, they gave John Jay a chance to get down on top of Pedroia, and even though the bag was between Pedroia and Jay. Now a pitch gets away from Ross and down to second is Freeze. He throws behind the runner, and Pedroia is there to corral the throw from Ross on ball one, and let's see what it is. Is it a wild pitch? I would think so. Ross going to his right trying to backhand it. That was his only play. And it is a wild pitch. Now you have to be extra careful with Descalso with Lance Lynn on deck at two outs. I guess John Farrell made it clear to us that he did not like the intentional walk today. Here is a 1 0 pitch from Buckholtz to Descalso. Breaking ball in for a strike. And you say that because last night with first base open, second and third, one out in that ninth inning. When the game ended, it was John Jay getting a chance to swing the bat. His ground ball to Pedroia started the chain reaction, which led to the obstruction call at third. And no intentional walk with Cosmo behind him in the lineup. Ross wanted to throw behind Freeze, but dropped it in the count two and one. And that is the reason that John Farrell did not intentionally walk. John Jay said when pitchers had, and John was an ex pitcher and an ex pitching coach, and now the manager of the Red Sox, now they're going to walk Descalso, trying to pitch to him to a two one count. John saying that uh, and he's right about that when when pitchers get the bases loaded as opposed to having an open base they squeeze the ball they have a tendency to fall behind hitters more and of course now it's a pitcher in this situation so it's not as important there's a big difference in pitching to a guy you don't care if you if you fall behind him if it's second and third and first base open. But if you put him on, now you've got to stay ahead in the count. And in this case, a base is open anyway, and Buckholtz, who has walked two, now one intentionally, so three total, will pitch with first and second, two out, and Lance Lynn at the plate. All right. Strike one. Lynn struck out looking on a 3 2 pitch. His first time. It was an eight pitch at bat, however, as Lance Lynn made Buckholtz work for that first out in the third inning. Here is an 0 1 pitch. Outside, a ball and a strike. Now you talk about there being no DH. And the pitcher having to hit. Well, Lance Lynn was four for 54 this season. Two on, two out. Breaking ball is a good one. Meanwhile, Buckholtz, you, know, you only have nine guys going to the plate in the lineup. Buckholtz is one for three in his career coming in. So it's not just not having the DH, it's also having a guy that's a little more used to swinging the bat in the lineup. Lynn compared to Buckholtz. Played perfectly. He was in, and Lynn drops it right into his glove on the run. Stephen Drew flipped it out of his glove on the run for the second out of the inning. And as we go to the fifth inning, one to nothing, St. Louis back after this from your local Fox station.
Lynn and his number so far as he goes to work in the fifth. A strong arm pitcher profile brought to you by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado strong for all the roads ahead. 50 pitches on the night. And here's David Ortiz the cleanup man leading it off in the fifth. An infield hit his first time up the only hit so far against Lynn. That is down into the corner. It is foul. Strike one. Line to line locked in is David Ortiz. He's been that way through the LCS and here in the World Series. There's really no place in the strike zone that you feel comfortable with him not hitting the ball hard. Get back in the batter's box with his 17 career postseason home runs. He's got two in this World Series and he takes outside a ball and a strike. The one thing the Cardinal pitchers have done to get Ortiz out is throw him curveballs. David Ortiz used to be a very good off speed hitter, but he has adjusted. He's very smart, adjusted. He's a different hitter now. He was fielding questions in 2010 and 2011 about whether his power was gone, his yeah. effectiveness was finished, and the career was over, and then he just took off. What a season he had this year. 30 home runs. He hits one into the gap in right center field. This ball's going to get down and go to the wall. David Ortiz has started this fifth inning with a stand-up double. Let's go! Leading with the guys in the bench to get going after he plugs the gap in right center. Yeah, there is no place again in the strike zone where you can keep him from hitting a ball hard. That's not a bad pitch from Lance Lynn. That sinker low and away, not on the corner, but outside part. Rope to right center. First extra base hit in this ball game for the Red Sox. And that starts the inning, so the tying run is out there in scoring position for Johnny Gomes. A high strike to start the at bat. Gomes does not have an RBI in this series, only two all postseason. He's 0 for 9 in the series, 5 out of 34 in the three rounds so far. That's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. At the very least, Gomes wants to move the runner, Ortiz, to third base. Ortiz, who has seven of the 20 Red Sox hits in this World Series. Trying to do it himself. Here's the 0-2. Foul back on a 94-mile-per-hour belt-high fastball. The rookie Bogart's on deck. Added to the lineup late. Takes just outside. Ball one. Just 90 minutes before tonight's game when he found out that Victorino couldn't go. And that he was getting the start and batting in that important spot behind David Ortiz with no Mike Napoli. Typically the first baseman, Ortiz the DH. Here's the one, two. Two and two.
In this World Series, Boston is four for 20 with runners in scoring position. All fastballs from Lynn Nagum so far. The 2 2. Fouled back, and Gomes put a good swing on a 95 mile per hour fastball, still 2 and 2. Gomes started the night a career 125 hitter during postseason play. Looking for his first hit. Of this World Series. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Ortiz, nobody out, and a pop up behind the plate. Molina gives it a look, and it's three rows back. What did Jim Leland, the former manager of the Detroit Tigers, tell us in that one meeting during the LCS? The way to run pitch counts up are with foul balls. He said if the Red Sox want to take the first pitch against our starter, and fall in the hole 0 and 1, they can do it. But the Red Sox do a great job fouling a lot of balls off, and the best foul ball hitter of the Red Sox is Mike Napoli. This is the 10th pitch of this at bat. 3 2 pitch is down and away, and a good at bat by Gomes. He'll trot down to first base with a walk after the double by Ortiz. It's two on, nobody out. First walk handed out by Lynn tonight, and here's Xander Bogarts. Mike Matheny giving the bunt sign to the infielders. I don't think Bogarts is going to be bunting. Lance, or I beg your pardon, Stephen Drew, four for 45 in the postseason. I don't believe that a bunt's in order right here with the bottom of the order, the pitcher of the third hitter up after Bogarts. And not only that, John Farrell. Backed up his line about not giving out intentional walks, which we don't bunt much either. He doesn't like to give up outs. Right. And the first pitch is inside for ball one. Bogarts is two for ten in this World Series with two RBIs. He's got runners on at first and second, nobody out. And that breaking ball from Lynn finds the strike zone, one ball, one strike. Brian Butterfield goes through the signs. Bogart's ready for a 1-1. One -one. Ball two. Here's a two one from Lynn. That is down in the count three and one. the count in his favor the 21 year old Xander Bogarts from Aruba on a chilly not cold night in St. Louis that's with his team down in this World Series trailing in game four two on nobody out and takes a walk to load him up a double two walks and Stephen Drew is in the spotlight as Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach, comes out to talk to Lynn. And action in the Cardinal bullpen, too. 
Seth Manus is up and throwing. Double play specialist. After the double by Ortiz, all of a sudden, Lance Lynn has lost the strike zone. What a great at bat by Johnny Gomes. You're right, Joe. Felix Dubron getting loose for the Red Sox in their bullpen. 25 pitch night last night. Or used as a starter this season by Boston, but they're going to need innings. And with the way the Red Sox are sitting here down in the series, down in the game, they've got Steven Drew up. He's one for ten in this World Series. Bases loaded, nobody out. What a chance for Steven Drew to come up with something big for Boston here in the fifth. He pops it into left. Holiday to his right. Ortiz is the runner. He tags. Here he comes. And safe as the ball trickles away. And this game is tied. 1-1. I think Johnny Gomes at second base could have been a little more aggressive on that play. And once he tagged, and Holiday made the throw, come about halfway, and that gives him an opportunity to go to third on the overthrow. The ball actually hit the runner. That was Ortiz. It trickles away from Molina, fielded by Lynn. But had Gomes been halfway, he could have gone to third base and been there with one out. Good throw by Holiday, but it got there. The ball and Ortiz at the same time right at Yadier Molina. The runners now at first and second. One out, a 1-1 game, and the batter is David Ross. He tries to punt, pops it up, strike one. You've got Ross up now who's in there trying to give this lineup a bit of a jolt. Look at Johnny Gomes, tentative at second base. He goes back to the bag to tag. If you go back to tag, why not go off farther than that? He goes back to second base thinking Molina may have had a play. And the ball hit the runner. He had a pretty good view of it at second base, too. Two on, one out. That runs inside on David Ross. On deck is Mike Karp. Barring a double play, he will bat for the starter, Clay Buckholz, here in the fifth. Now Randy Choke joins Seth Manis out in the Cardinal bullpen. This was started by David Ortiz with a double. And then walks, a sack fly by Drew. Strike two on Ross. For Drew, his first RBI of this World Series. Two. Two and two. Dubrot getting loose. Top of the order will bat for St. Louis in the bottom of this fifth. Another good game. To this point in this World Series. Last night tight. One five four. On the obstruction call. Cardinals lead in this series. Red Sox have just tied the game and Ross backs out. Foul back. Buckholtz still in the dugout. If Ross should bounce into a double play, the decision then would come to John Farrell as to whether to send Buckholtz back out there. With his spot not coming up. Now Yadier Molina is going to go out and talk. Second time he's been out to visit Lance Lynn. It's 
So while they gather on the mound and Yadier Molina talks about the signs with Lance Lynn, here's a game summary. For the Red Sox, their fifth straight postseason game with an error. It led to an unearned run driven in by Carlos Beltran. The RBI single in the third, Clay Buckholtz. A run on three hits through four innings, and Lance Lynn is out there. Tie game, two on, one out, and a 2 2 count on David Ross. And the at bat will continue, and that stung the shoulder of Yadier Molina. I think it was his left shoulder, that fastball in, yep. Also hit a home plate umpire, Paul Emmel. Pitch number 77 on the night here in the fifth inning with one out. And again, David Ross steps out. Runners at first and second. And now a full count on Ross. He talked in the manager's interview with Mike Matheny about the rhythm that a catcher mm -hmm. has with a pitcher. We've seen Ross step out a few times during this at bat with Lynn on the rubber, I think, trying to bother his rhythm. Yeah, trying to upset that cadence that he has with Yadier Molina. And now the count's full. And he steps out again. And now Yadi and Rolina is going to go back out and talk. Rolina probably telling, telling him, don't let stepping out make you wild. He's already walked two in this inning. A 3-2 count to Ross. Something we talked about early with Lynn. They try and guide him through, mm -hmm. not to let him get hot, let his emotions get the best of him. And I think the Red Sox, and in particular David Ross, are testing him here in the fifth inning. One would think so with Ross stepping out four or five times. He's back in. Runners at first and second, one out, and a 3 2 count. Lynn gets the strikeout, two gone. Lynn probably saying to himself, you can't step out forever. Sooner or later, you're going to have to face it. 3-2 pitch, good fastball to get Ross. Five strikeouts to go against the two walks, both in this inning. And now Mike Carp will bat for Buckholz, who goes four tonight. Allows a run on three hits. An unearned run at that. Walk three, struck out two. Carp hits it hard, but right at Adams, who goes to the bag. And we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Red Sox have tied it. It started with a double by David Ortiz, RBI for Stephen Drew. Here's the exclusive final trailer debut of the Hunger Games catching fire as we go to the bottom of the fifth.
Play. Find new roads. Aerial coverage of tonight's game provided by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Bottom of the fifth inning, and here is Felix Dubrant, who's been impressive during the regular season and has really filled a need for John Farrell coming out of the bullpen here in the postseason. Felix Dubrant can pitch in a very important situation last night. Worked two innings, giving up no runs, one hit. And back in there tonight, only 25 pitches last night. So he could go two, three, turnover of a lineup maybe. He's got the top of the order with Carpenter, Beltron, and Holiday, along with our producer Pete Machesker, our director Bill Webb. We bring you game four of this 2013 World Series. And the game tied 1 1. There are the numbers for Buckholtz, who goes four innings, 66 pitches. Play. It's his shortest outing of this postseason, but all things considered, he did what the Red Sox wanted him to do, saying he's got one start left in him and a guy who's obviously has diminished pitching stuff. He was able to get through four, allowing only three hits and an unearned run. There's a strike to Matt Carpenter. I think if you told John Farrell before the game that when Clay Buckholz leaves this game, you're going to be tied, he'd said he'd, he would have said to himself, "I'll take it." It's a 1-1 game, bottom of the fifth. A one pitch in on the hands and a check swing. He went around strike two. Remember John Lackey, who was so good in game two, is also available in that bullpen. For an inning or so for John Farrell. Lackey went six and a third, was the tough luck loser. As the bullpen allowed two inherited runners to score, that was Breslow. But he pitched well. He's out there in the pen. The 0 2. That's on the outside corner one way. And a good start to this outing for Dubront. Remember that inside fastball in on the hands? That set up that pitch right there. Not necessarily the location, but how you got there. Inside fastball, outside fin fastball. See you later, Matt Carpenter. Here's Carlos Beltran, one for two. Has to turn around and bat right handed. Which, as he told Ken Rosenthal after the rib injury in game one, he prefers to hit right handed. Bothers him more when he bats lefty with that front side. And the bruised ribs. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Down and in, one ball, one strike. Beltron with a Cardinal RBI. It was an unearned run after a single by Carpenter in the third. He took second on an error by Ellsbury in right center. Scored on the hit by Beltron, who bats here with the bases empty, one out, 2 0 pitch. Off the end of the bat. Gomes has to try and recover, and he does. He went back and then had to close fast and gets out number two. And one step back sometimes is perilous for an outfielder, but Johnny Gomes recovers to make the play. Catch it before it hits the ground. <laughs> and now Holiday with two out, nobody on. Felix Dubron. Signed at the age of 16. He's in his ninth season with the Red Sox organization. He just turned 26. They like him and a big part of their rotation this year and going forward strike 193 from Dubron. First time Felix is pitching on back to back days since September. Of 2011. Looks fine so far. The 0 1 is in for a strike. Nothing in two. First breaking ball by DeBron and a good one. Spotting his fastball, then he throws the curve. 
right in there. Working with David Ross, the Boston catcher. Two out, nobody on the 0-2. On the outside corner, and an impressive inning put together by the 26-year-old left-hander. It sends us into the sixth of game four with the Red Sox and Cardinals tied 1-1. United in the fight against cancer with our partner Stand Up to Cancer. Please join Commissioner Selig, Major League Baseball, our players, MasterCard, Fox Sports, and the entire baseball family in Standing Up to Cancer. And please go to StandUpToCancer.org to find out how you can help today. Thank you. Whether it's players on the field, umpires on the field, fans in the stands, us in the booth. There is not a person in this stadium, I would bet, that hasn't been touched by this terrible disease. And what they're doing at Stand Up to Cancer is phenomenal work. Joining these all-star teams of researchers, physicians, to try and find a cure. And so now is this ball game continues. We move into the sixth inning. And for the Boston Red Sox who tied it in the top of the fifth. They will have the top of their lineup. Against the right hander Lance Lynn.
There was some action happening on the way to break. Matt Holiday was involved in that, but Matt Holiday is in a much different place this time around here in 2013 as opposed to last year. And for more on that, let's go down to Ken Rosenthal. That's right, Joe. It was just over a year ago when Matt Holiday's mother, Kathy, was diagnosed with colon cancer. She underwent surgery on October 18th, just hours before game four of the NLCS. The good news, she is in remission. She even babysat Matt's older three children while the series was in Boston. So Matt Holiday is in a much better place. During the series last year, he basically said that he had to turn it on and off, devote himself to the team while he was at the ballpark and his family when he was not. Ken, thank you. We go back to the action and we go pitch by pitch and this at bat by Holiday. He did not like that pitch right there. Those pitches all look like strikes to me. I think Dubron did a very good job of setting Matt Holiday up for that fastball right on the corner. Thought they were good calls by Paul Emmel. And then Holiday and Emmel got into it a little bit. Holiday obviously still in the ball game. Right. But Mike Matheny ran out from his spot in the dugout to make sure <laughs> right. that he stood in front of anybody who was going to get kicked out. It was going to be the Cardinal manager, not the Cardinal left fielder. And as you would expect, as we get year after year, we've seen plenty this postseason. I mentioned it during one of the two games in Boston. We've seen so many arguments, and some of them not so mild with strike calls at home plate. And the fuse is a bit longer during the postseason with home plate umpires not running players. But Paul Emmel, I guess it hurt enough for Matt Holliday. And got his attention as he was going back to the dugout. Mike Matheny came out had his say. And now we are officially into the sixth inning here in game four. Well in the postseason the reason these teams are in the postseason pitchers make pitches that could go one way or the other. They're right on the corner. It's amazing the control these guys have. So you would think that uh, some of the calls the call strikes are going to be very controversial and usually are. Because of the caliber of pitchers you have on the mound. Corner here, corner there, right above the knees, at the letters. All quadrants of the strike zone. Top of the order for the Red Sox in this tie game and a strike from Lance Lynn. Jacoby Ellsbury, 0 for 2 against Lynn. He's popped up, grounded out. It was a leadoff double by David Ortiz in the fifth inning that started the trouble for Lynn. That's a strike. And the count nothing in two. Back to back walks after the double. Stephen Drew could manage a sacrifice fly. Then Ross struck out. The pinch hitter, Carp. Rounded out. This is Descalso, and Ellsbury is 0 for 3. The World Series on Fox is sponsored by Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart. By Thor, The Dark World in theaters November 8th. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Here's Daniel Nava, one out, nobody on. We came to the booth. As you look at Randy Choke getting loose, I had the name Jack Williams on my sign for stand up to cancer. And Jack is such a vital part of what we do postseason after postseason. He's in a battle and not with us during this October, but he is so missed. Oh boy. Being around the truck compound and being here in the stadium and. Uh, we hope to get him back soon. One out, nobody on. Daniel Nava waits for the 0 1. Chops it to third, freeze, makes the play on the run, two out. 
tricky hop on David Freeze. You talked about soccer being played here, football being played. That's a tough hop, good play. With two out, nobody on the batter will be Dustin Pedroia. Folks, we have tremendous news to share. MasterCard is announcing this evening here at Bush Stadium that in addition to the $4 million they presented to stand up to cancer earlier, they are looking to raise another $4 million, which is amazing. You can go to MasterCard.com slash do good to learn more about how you can get involved. With two out, nobody on. Dustin Pedroia, who has struck out twice, he has not figured out Lance Lynn. Stands in. Hitting 231 this World Series. He's figured out Lynn. With a base hit into left center field. And the top of the sixth inning continues on a hit by Pedroia. And that will get David Ortiz to the plate with a man on. David Ortiz, who got the scoring started. He's two for two in this game, and he has been vocal between innings, getting everybody together almost like a huddle in football. You don't see it a lot in baseball trying to get his team pumped up. Like we saw Hunter Pence do all of last year during the postseason. I don't think it's a running situation for Pedroia. Let David Ortiz, the hottest bat on either side, hit. If he steals second, the Cardinals walk him. First pitch over, but low ball one. Mention it after his double, Ortiz with seven of the 21 hits in this series. Belong to David Ortiz. That barely missed again. The two, count 2 0. Manus again. Choke again. They should be loose. Pedroia with a two out single. Holmes on deck. But the focus on David Ortiz, who takes ball three, 3 0. would need a ticket to be any deeper and they were watching with the rest of us on a four pitch walk to Ortiz that is walk number three and we'll see if Lance Lynn gets a chance to face Johnny Gomes again or if it's Manus out of the bullpen well that was clearly a pitch around Lance Lynn was not even close to David Ortiz even though there was a runner on at first base and by doing that you push the go ahead run to second and a good base runner in Pedroia. Some things you need to know about Johnny Gomes as he bats with two on and two out from Petaluma, California. He led the big leagues in pinch hit home runs this year with four. And he wears 707 on his glove and shoes to honor his hometown. Hometown of uh, Petaluma, California. The runner up in the Little League U.S. Championships last year. And now with that, Lance Lynn has had his night come to an end. He's not happy about it. But Mike Matheny's going to take the baseball. And Seth Manis is going to enter from beyond the wall in right center. Lynn is out. Main is in. Gomes coming up in a tie game in the sixth.
Jeff Maness with two on, two out. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Johnny Gomes at the plate. Maness pitching back-to-back -back nights. Former starter in the minor leagues. And that misses for ball one. Maness went two-thirds of an inning last night. Allowed a hit. That was to Daniel Nava. Their inherited runner scored. And that tied the game at two at that time. That's a strike. And they count one and one. Red Sox outfielders in the World Series only four for 40 with no extra base hits. Gomes is 0 for 9 in the count 2 and 1. Facing Seth Manus, you know you're going to get something to hit on the ground. So if you're going to look for a pitch, look for it down. The rookie right hander. Brings home a 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. He's got great sinking action on his pitches. Right. Two on, two out for the Red Sox. There's a drive into left. Back at the track, at the wall, it's gone. Johnny Gomes has hit a three-run home run and put the Red Sox on top, four to one. Seth Manus. Got a sinker up, and we've said it many, many times, catchers don't catch high sinkers. Hitters hit them, and hard. First extra base hit by a Boston Red Sox outfielder in this series. Now Bogarts gets a base hit into right, and the Red Sox who trailed one to nothing going into the top of the fifth inning lead it four to one watch how the first few pitches are down one and one pitch down fouled off and now up the sinker up for a three run home run the reaction from Pedroia Making his way around third and toward the plate. Johnny Gomes with his first hit of this World Series. There's a strike to Drew. The Red Sox really have done that throughout this entire postseason. They have a guy at the plate who hasn't produced. And they step up in a spot to make something happen. And they've been able to do it. It happened in game six with Victorino in the Grand Slam. David Ortiz before him and now the ground ball ends the inning but the Boston Red Sox lead it and it's Johnny Gomes who gets Seth Manus Seth's head goes down as the ball goes up and out a three run shot and the Red Sox down in this series lead game four four to one into the bottom of the sixth
Lewis, and now the Cardinals are down by three. It's Johnny Gomes who delivered with a two-out, three-run shot in the top of this sixth inning. Dubron back to work. Had a perfect fifth inning. And he finds strike one on Adams. Johnny Gomes' heart still pounding out there in left field, I'm sure, after finding his first hit of this World Series, and he dropped it over the wall. Here's the 0-1. Strike two. A guy who was not even scheduled to start were it not for the lower back pains of Shane Victorino. Johnny Gomes wouldn't even be in the lineup. Adams has grounded out, flied out. Dubront brings it home on 0-2. It's strike three, another called third strike for Felix Dubron. David Ortiz was trying to pump up his teammates before the inning, and for David Ortiz, he was looking for somebody, anybody to join him in this fight against the Cardinals at the plate, and it's Johnny Gomes, a late addition to the starting lineup, and as he celebrates... In the background, Seth Manus hangs his head on the mound. With one out, nobody on. Here's Molina. Ball one. Yadier one for two tonight with a double. And he's hit a comebacker. He faces Dubron for the first time. Sure, they're happy back in Petaluma, California. And Boston, Mass. And New England. Red Sox trying to even this series. Counts 2-0 and on Molina before John Jay bats. As the leaves change in New England, so is the score. 2-0, the count with one out, nobody on. Molina flies one into left. Back is Gomes in front of the track. Two out. Moments ago, John Lackey was up and getting loose for the Red Sox out in their bullpen. And Johnny's talking to his teammates out in the pen, <laughs> sitting behind that fence in left center field as he made that catch. Yeah. Two out, nobody on. Here's John Jay. With two out, Jay takes the ball outside. Cardinals have struck out five times against Boston pitching tonight, all looking. I've got it. Two out, nobody on. Here comes a 1-0 pitch. One ball, one strike. So Lackey has taken a seat. The pitcher's spot is due up second in the top of the seventh. Right now, Dubron rolling right through the Cardinal top of their lineup. He's retired all five he's faced. And he's a strike away from retiring all six. He has struck out three. Here's the next to Jay. Outside, two and two. Every time DeBron has shaken his head, yes or no, he's thrown a fastball after that. The little things that I'm sure Cardinal hitters pick up. It's going to be a fastball. On two and two. And that fastball misses down and away a full count. On deck is David Freeze. Dubron and Ross. Trying to get through two scoreless. This is Pedroia. Flips to Ortiz. And as we go into the seventh inning here in game four. The biggest swing of the night. One more look. Johnny Gomes getting it up and out over the wall and left. 
greeted by Ortiz and Pedroia. Four to one game back after this from your local Fox station. Third at bat for David Ross. He has struck out twice. That was against Lynn. First pitch is a strike. It'll be Ross, then Dubron. As the counts 0 and 2 on David Ross, then Jacoby Ellsbury against Manus. Manager John Farrell of the Red Sox during the first two games when this series was back in Boston, very upfront about why. They go out there and as a team try to get a starting pitcher's pitch count up. Usually the underbelly of every roster is middle relief. You get all the money in a pitching staff in the front end at the back end. The Cardinals have those young hard throwers at the back end. It was Manus who's had a very good year. Who was brought in out of the bullpen and that's who Johnny Gomes got for the home run into left. Here's John Jay to his left. One away. Before tonight's game, Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers received the 2013 Hank Aaron Award for the American League. National League winner Paul Goldschmidt of the Arizona Diamondbacks is in Australia promoting the 2014 MLB season opener. The Hank Aaron Award originated in 1999 to mark the 25th anniversary of Aaron eclipsing Babe Ruth's all-time home run record. It recognizes the best overall hitter in each league. By the way, the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers will have a two game series in late March at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And that's where Paul Goldschmidt is. The winner from the National League, and no argument with that or with Miguel Cabrera from the AL. With one out, nobody on. Here's Dubron. Ahead on the count, two and one. Now two and two as Manus gets the call. Still two and two. 
Seth Maynard's throwing five pitches to Johnny Gomes, and on a 2 2 count, all of those pitches were down in the strike zone. A trademark of Maynard's. Double plays, including the postseason 17 this year. And he got one up. That's the difference so far. A strikeout for round number two. And the bases are empty for Maynard's back to the top of the order in Ellsbury. And Ellsbury will not face the right hander. Randy Choate has been up three different times, and it appears we'll see Choate here. Main is the rookie, came on, and after the walk to David Ortiz from Lynn, Main has gave up the home run to Gomes. It's a four to one game as we play in the seventh. Randy Choate checks into the ball game here in the seventh inning. Two out, nobody on, and he will pitch to the left-handed hitting Jacoby Ellsbury, who's 0 for 3. That was all against Lance Lynn. The three-run rally that happened for the Red Sox in the sixth inning all happened with two out. Base hit into left center by Pedroia. A walk on four straight to David Ortiz, then the pitching change in Johnny Gomes. It was a late addition to the starting lineup hit the three run home run to left. And now the 0 1 to Ellsbury is chopped to the right side foul strike two. Joe pitched in last night's game. Gave up a base hit to David Ortiz. How about Randy Choate 12 years apart his last World Series with the 2001 Yankees. Pitching in games one and six in Arizona. World Series won by the D backs, beating the Yankees in seven games. John Axford getting loose. Choke brings it. Ellsbury off the end of the bat into right. It is caught by Beltron, and we are going into the bottom of the seventh in a three run game. Choke comes in, does his job, gets the out. And we are at seventh inning stretch time here in game four. As part of their ongoing commitment to our troops, Bank of America will donate one dollar on behalf of each person in attendance tonight to welcome back veterans and wounded warrior project. And now 
For the introduction of God Bless America, let's join public address announcer John Hewlett. Ladies and gentlemen, we now pause for a moment to sing God Bless America. We are led this evening by Sergeant Christine Permenter, vocalist with the Maneuver Support Center of Excellence and the Fort Leonard Wood 399th Army Band. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the to the oceans, what we fall. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my. great to have moments like these where we can thank our service members and veterans. Join Bank of America in support of our troops and share your gratitude for our troops at hashtag troop thanks. To the bottom of the seventh inning, it's game four, Red Sox leading four to one. of America, proud supporter of our service members and veterans by T-Mobile with global data coverage in over 100 countries at no extra charge and by Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. Here's David Freeze leading it off in the seventh inning against Felix Dubron and Dubron is not out there without a safety net. Action in the bullpen for the Red Sox with Tazawa on the left. Breslow, the left-hander, on your right. 
Here's a 1 out of Freeze, who is 0 for 2. And struggling to find his stroke this postseason. During our first meeting with John Farrell, before game one, of course, we asked if Koji Uehara would go for a six out save. And John thought a minute, thought a minute, yes was the answer. Breaking ball in for a strike one and two. Kevin Segrist, the left hander, is getting loose for the Cardinals in their pen. So the wheels are turning here in the seventh in a four to one game. The Red Sox leading. Here's a one two. Two and two. Manus thinking about a sinker that didn't sink. Mm -hmm. Johnny Gomes with a three run shot in the top of the sixth inning to make it four to one. Here is a 2 2 pitch to David Freeze. Chopper left side. Drew gathers, throws, got him. And that seven straight retired by Dubron. Geico in game box score for the Cardinals. RBI for Carlos Beltran. That's it. Only an unearned run tonight. After a single and an error on a ball hit by Carpenter, he scored back in the third. It was a single tally in the fifth, the Red Sox to tie it. And the two out, three run shot by Gomes to put Boston out in front. It happened in the sixth. Here's Descalso. Outside ball one with Shane Robinson on deck. And in the World Series, it doesn't matter when the outs come, but if the outs come, Clay Buckholz getting 12 important outs tonight as a starter. Wasn't great, but good enough so far. Count 2 0. He only allowed three hits. Yeah. And no earned runs. He walked three, including one intentionally, and struck out two. One out, a 2 0 pitch. 3 0. With Shane Robinson on deck, you wonder how much longer if Dubron loses Descalso. John Farrell will go with a guy who was mainly a starter this season. But if you're Descalso, also you're trailing by three runs, a late innings. You take not one, but two pitches. Taking here on three and oh. Three and one. We'll see if he does it on three and one. He's swinging and he pops it up. That might have been ball four, too. It's Pedroia two out. And with the bases empty, the batter will be Shane Robinson. Tomorrow night, it's Game 5 of this World Series. And our pregame coverage begins on Fox Sports 1 at 7 Eastern. With a Fox Sports Live World Series special followed at 7.30 Eastern here on Fox. And it's a rematch of Game 1. John Lester and Adam Wainwright. They get the starts. There are the numbers from Game 1 at Fenway. Don't miss it all. Beginning on Fox Sports 1 at 7 Eastern. With game five coverage moving over to Fox right here at 730 Eastern. Here's Robinson. Line drive into the gap in left center field. Robinson watches it bang off the chest of Gomes. He's got a two out pinch hit double. First ball swinging Shane Robinson sliding his Gomes. Robinson easily in the second. And I know you well enough, Tim, to know that you're thinking about that 3-1 pitch that this council popped up. You're exactly right. It was a borderline pitch. You're trailing by three. Your run means nothing. Your at-bat means nothing. You've got to add on at-bats. Here's the 3-1 pitch to Descalso. Borderline. Could have been up. Could have been inside. Swinging at it. And then the double on the first pitch by Robinson. What a fantastic job by Felix Dubron. He comes in, 
retires the first eight he faces. Gives up the pinch hit double. He was good last night as well. Carpenter coming up. Breslow coming in here in the seventh. Down to 46. We just spent time during the break talking to the guys at Fox Sports Live. Mm -hmm. Jay and Dan. Yep. Funny guys. Kind of a nice little highlight for our evening here as we get into the late innings. Entertaining. They'll have coverage after the game on Fox Sports 1 as Breslow comes in. Carpenter's going to need to use more of the bat than that. Yeah, good. Good to see his hands go back down to the bottom and he will try and on after the pinch hit double by Shane Robinson. It's Breslow. Strike one. Breslow has been working left handed batters inside throughout this series. We'll see if he tries to work Carpenter there eventually. Usually keep in mind that if a, if a pitcher starts out with the pitch that's away, it doesn't mean he's going to try to get you out away. Often the first pitch is not where he's going to go to get you out. Here's the 0 1. That's down and in. Breslow was virtually perfect for the first two rounds of the postseason against Tampa Bay and then against Detroit. Did a couple of bumps in this World Series. The 1 1. Ball 2, 2 and 1. Tozawa getting loose. Beltron, the switch hitting outfielder, waiting on deck. Carpenter floats a base hit into right. They're going to bring Robinson. The throw by Nava is not in time. It's a two-run game. No slide by Robinson. Stepped around Ross and on the plate for the second run of the night. Sometimes the sliding lane is blocked. I don't know whether it was or not by David Ross. Key hit by Matt Carpenter. The two-run game now, not hit hard, off 
with the trademark. The throw by Nava is online. See, the only way to get in the home plate is to step over the left shin guard of Ross. You slide, you're out. Good play by Robinson. Now Beltron. That run is charged to Dubron. And the Cardinals have a guy at the plate with 16 career postseason home runs. Representing the tying run. Here comes a 1 0 to Beltron. 2 and 0. And a visit from David Ross with Tazawa getting ready for a holiday. Those two hooked up last night. And Holiday got Junichi with a double down the left field line. On a ball out of the strike zone. About shin high last night. Here's what Beltron's done. 99 AL Rookie of the Year with Kansas City. Hmm. Eight-time All-Star. 358 career home runs. 48 career postseason games. He's hit 16 home runs. Driven in 38 with a 335 average. One for three tonight with an RBI. Breslow has to come to him. And he can't. It's 3-0. and oh. He faces Carpenter, gives up the RBI base hit. He faces Beltron and walks him on four straight pitches. And now the battle that we saw last night. Tozawa with a chance for redemption. With Holiday looking for a repeat performance when we come back here in the seventh. Pen for the Red Sox during the postseason. The big three being Uahara, the closer, Tozawa, the right hander, Breslow, the left hander, had pitched 19 innings, allowed two runs on 13 hits. It's been a bit of a different story in this World Series against the Cardinals, especially for Breslow. 
And now it's Tozawa, who last night faced Matt Holliday with two on in a tie game in the seventh. Yeah, it was a different story last night, too. One and one pitch. Watch where it is. Down and in. Shin high. Driving in two to temporarily give the Cardinals a 4 2 lead, and the Red Sox tied it in the eighth. So Matt Holliday, who in this World Series has driven home four, bats with runners at first and second. Good speed is on for St. Louis with Carpenter and Beltron. And the number three hitter for the Cardinals, Matt Holliday, is ready. So is Tozawa. Strike one. Holiday 0 for 3 tonight. The guy who came into tonight hitting 337 since the end of July as John Lackey gets loose. But this is all Tozawa and Holiday. Ross sets up away. And Holiday hits it right to Pedroia. The inning is over. The Cardinals get a run closer on a two-out RBI hit by Matt Carpenter. But game four is going into the eighth inning. Red Sox down two games to one. Lead tonight 4-2. Coming up after this game on Fox Sports Live, it's your home for World Series post-game coverage. As Kevin Segris takes over and deals a strike. And a 95-mile-an-hour fastball to Nava. We're underway in the eighth inning in a 4-2 to two game now. Segris, the hard-throwing left-hander, another rookie coming out of that Cardinal bullpen. 
Here's the 0 1. Popped up. Right side. Carpenter wants it. And has it one out. Jimmy Rollins, A.J. Pierzynski, Gabe Kapler, Eric Karras break it all down. Plus a wild finish in Detroit between the Cowboys and the Lions. And full highlights of week eight in the NFL. That's all coming up after the game on Fox Sports Live on Fox Sports 1. You're not going to tell us what it is? What happened between the Cowboys and the Lions? Well, the Cowboys were chalking up a victory and a nice road win in Detroit when the Detroit Lions went down the field. I think they went 80 yards wow. in four plays and scored what was the game winning touchdown on a one yard run by Matthew Stafford, their quarterback, and they get a win. Here's a 1 0. Pedroia takes a strike. One ball, one strike. Matthew Stafford, Clayton Kershaw's buddy. That's right. No, Joe, now's the time you think about replacing Ortiz defensively. You want to maximize Mike Napoli. So if Ortiz makes the last out of the game, you might consider bringing in your Hara and maybe Napoli hitting ninth. I don't know. Talking about the last out of the inning. Uh, yeah, right. The last out of the inning. Did I say the game? You said the game. Uh, yeah, I meant the. You could bring in inning. anybody at that point. Yeah, right. Pedroia pops it up into shallow left. Holiday is there. Two up. But I'll guarantee you that's what John Farrell's thinking about right now is do you try to get the last six out with David Ortiz on first base? I don't think he will. I think Napoli's going to be in the game. It's, it's a matter of where he hits. That counts. Considering the last night in that 5-4 game with all of the Guys coming out of the bullpen, double switching, guys coming off the bench. Mike Napoli did not get in the game. Right. Two out, nobody on. Ortiz has got another hit. He's taken care of Segrist twice in this World Series. Once for a home run in game one, and now a base hit up the middle. Is he locked in or is he locked in? Hitting machine right now. Right on the butt. Johnny Gomes is coming up and John Axford is coming in. Two thirds of an inning for Segrist. And Mike Matheny has been wearing out a path between the dugout and the mound the last two nights. Johnny Gomes, the biggest swing of the night. It was a 1 1 game. Throw away the shaving cream and the razor. His three run home run, the difference so far. He'll bat when we come back.
left-handed pitching, seven for 17 with three home runs. And tonight on base four times, he's lifted for the pinch runner, Quentin Berry, who has never been thrown out trying to steal a base in the big leagues. You've got the right-hander, the tall John Axford, into the game. The Red Sox have not attempted a steal in this World Series to this point. Johnny Gomes is the batter, and with Quentin Berry out there, we'll see if he tests Yadier Molina. Either way, it's a very good move by John Farrell. Gomes the batter. Back. And a check on Barry. John Lackey is still up for the Red Sox in their bullpen. Tozawa is in the game. But Lackey is at least still up and throwing lightly out in the pen. Check on the runner again. We talked about how this is John Lackey's side day. And while you watch him work, you wonder if he's working to potentially come into this game or if he's just getting some work in. I think he's working to come in the game. I think by bringing him in the game, you give Napoli a chance to hit down in the order and perhaps in the ninth inning. Just a guess. The problem with that, and you were the one that had him look it up, the last yeah. relief appearance for John Lackey back in 2004. Yeah, and pitching is, is more of a premium. I get your drift, and you might be right, because pitching's more of a premium now than finding a place for Mike Napoli. And I would think Napoli will go into this spot for Barry, who's running for Ortiz as this pitch sails up and away. The count's 2-0. Oh. Defense with pitching involved now at a premium down two games to one up by two with Tazawa in the game and Uehara ready for more than an inning as John Farrell is not scared to do that. He's the Red Sox closer. One on two out two and oh the count and now three and oh. On deck is Xander Bogarts. Cardinals got a run in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's a two run game. They'll have Matt Adams, Yadier Molina, and John Jay in the bottom of this eighth inning. Axford trying to keep it a two run game. Runner goes. Pitch a strike. Throw down is into center field. Barry will hold. And the Red Sox have their first attempt and their first steal. It belongs to Quentin Berry. At least somebody in the Boston Red Sox dugout said when Quentin Berry stole that base and the ball was an error, I thought was going to be a throwing error on Yadier Molina, somebody said obstruction. <laughs> but no obstruction. No, of course not. And the count three and one. That was obviously the topic coming in after last night. And a lot of the players talking about it after the game shocked some reading their quotes mm -hmm. as to how the rule exactly read. Now Mujica, who for the majority of the season was the closer for the Cardinals, getting loose. Runner at second, two out. 3-1 to Gomes. Full count. How about Quentin Berry stealing on a 3-0 count? That's a count in which most good base runners don't even attempt to run. Three balls, two strikes, runner at second, two out. And Molina asks for time at the plate. Gomes has drawn a walk. He's hit a three-run home run. He's one for two. Here's a 3-2 pitch. It's down and away. Ball four. 
And with two on two out the batter will be Xander Bogarts. Bogarts will step in. He's been on base twice. He has drawn a walk and singled. His base hit followed the three run home run by Gomes in the sixth. So he continues to do his work at the plate. Getting a chance here to add to a two run lead. Axford brings it. Ball one. John Axford, the dethroned closer for the Milwaukee Brewers, picked up by John Mosellock, the Cardinal general manager, to add to this bullpen. One of the few guys with a lot of experience down there. That's fouled back. One ball, one strike on Bogarts. Six hitters for St. Louis in the bottom of this eighth. Bogarts trying to add to a 4 2 lead. The 1 1. Breaking ball is in for a strike. Strike two. Bogarts thought it was high. Might have been. Two strikes on the hit of the rookie Xander Bogarts. Two on with two out. And the one-two pitch. Blocked by Molina. Ball two. trying to keep it a two run game. Bogarts trying to drive home Barry from second. Two out. And a 2 2 pitch. Full count. Kevin Segrist gave up the hit to Ortiz and he was gone. Axford took over and walked Johnny Gomes. It's a full count now on Xander Bogarts. Runners go. On strike three and a breaking ball. The hard throwing Axford gets out of the inning. More from Pearl Jam. And look at this. John Lackey. Is coming in. First relief appearance since 2004. He'll try and protect a two run Boston lead.
card, preferred card of Major League Baseball since 1997, and by AT&T, rethink possible. Here's Matt Adams against John Lackey. Tozawa ends up coming in and getting one out as Mike Napoli takes over at first base. Tozawa goes one third of an inning. And Lackey takes over, and I, I find this is a strange move here in the eighth inning. We were talking about it, and we disagreed uh, going to break. But I think the reason Farrell did this, he's got Uehara as an insurance policy. And the minute, like if, if Lackey walks Matt Adams to lead off the inning, I think Uehara gets up immediately. Here's a 2-0. 2-1. No Lackey was so good in game two. Mm -hmm. Got the loss, but that's a bit deceiving with how he pitched. And you're right, too. I mean, it's his first relief appearance in nine years. Here's a 2 1. Adams hits it foul. He's thrown the ball so well this postseason, and he gets into the action here in game four. Here tonight. Johnny Gomes adds his name to this long list of players for the Red Sox who have stepped up when Boston needed it most as Adams chunks one left side. Bogarts charges, throws, and got it. Xander Bogarts got Matt Adams by half a step on a good play. Ball stayed up for Xander. And that made the throw easier at first base. Adams not a fast runner. We'll let you digest that graphic as we will put it up again before the end of the night. Our game summary, if you just joined us. Beltron and Carpenter with RBI singles. The biggest swing is the guy on the bottom of that list, Johnny Gomes, with the three-run home run. Good breaking ball from Lackey straight one. Gomes was hitless and a late addition to the starting lineup when he stepped up in the sixth inning, two on, two out. And untied the game. That's outside to Molina. One ball, one strike. That was a big out that Xander Bogarts just got at first by getting Adams on that slow hit chopper. Here's a 1 1. 2 and 1 from Lackey. And O'Hara is up and just now starting to get loose. I don't think Farrell makes a move like this because there is risk involved, as you said. But I think he trusts John Lackey, and that's why he's in there. Here's a 2-1. A guy who missed all of last season recovering from Tommy John surgery. He gets the ball out of the bullpen here in the eighth inning. He got the out with Adams, and now has fallen behind Molina, 3-1. Molina one for three tonight. Willing to take, and it's a full count. What will it be from Lackey on three and two? That is hard hit. Dive and stop Bogarts. Throw to first gets away. Molina will go down to second base and make it without a play. Great catch, poor throw by Bogarts. Nice play. Backhand. The throw, low. Napoli just in the game, pulled off the bag. That was a 3-2 slider Molina hit. It's probably going to be a, a hit and an error. And Molina gets to second base in this two-run ball game. I thought like you it could be a hit and an error. Instead, it's a straight error. Oh, it is. Okay. And it's a runner at second with one out. And John Jay at the plate. Jay 0 for 1 tonight. Takes a ball down and in. Not only is Lackey not pitched out of the bullpen since 2004, but Tozawa came in and was asked to face only one batter. He got Holiday with two on. To end the seventh. See Alan Craig with a helmet on his head in the Cardinal dugout. Jay, that one gets away from Ross. And Molina goes to third with one out. That looked
looked like a pass ball right there. That's a ball that David Ross normally sucks up. But it kept sliding. A low slider. Ball he should have had. We called it a wild pitch. Runner at third. One out and a 2 0 pitch to Jay. A little pop up on the infield. Drew is there, and that's the second out. And the batter will be David Freeze. Freeze walks in 0 for 3, and 1 out of 11 in this World Series. Game's only in the eighth inning. That's a big out picked up by John Lackey with a runner at third and only one out as he jams John Jay and gets the pop up. It stays on the infield. Now freeze. Ball one. That was a cheap run opportunity for the Cardinals. Ground ball with the infield back. Carlos Martinez now warming for St. Louis. Here's a 1 0. On the outside corner, a ball and a strike. Alan Craig has come into the on deck circle. Here's a 1 1. Freeze, grounds to short. Drew picks it up, gets the out, and John Lackey rewards John Farrell with a scoreless eighth inning. Three big outs picked up by a guy who typically starts first relief appearance since 2004. And he keeps it 4-2 Boston.
Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. We're in the ninth inning now. John Lackey. Three big outs picked up. His side day for work. He was the game two starter. After a long night for each bullpen last night, John Farrell kept him back from working before the game. And he worked in the game and got through the eighth. Stephen Drew is at the plate with a 1 1 count now as Lackey's teammates welcome him back to the dugout after keeping it 4 2 Boston. John Lester with a hug for him. Lester gets the ball tomorrow night against Adam Wainwright. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Drew takes ball two. Red Sox with two errors tonight. They had a couple last night. But the pitching, especially DuBrant and Lackey in the eighth inning, good enough to get around them as Drew takes a ball to make it three and one. Yeah, remember because of that double switch, putting Lackey in the four hole and Napoli in the nine hole. Mike Napoli is hitting third in this inning. Drew, then Ross, then Napoli. Here comes a 3 1 pitch. 96 from Axford, a full count. In the bottom of the ninth inning, St. Louis will have Descalso. Then a pinch hitter, and then Matt Carpenter. Anybody gets on Beltron. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Foul back. Temperature has really dropped over the last two innings. As Mujica, who was up last inning, is back up again. As we play in the top of the ninth. Another 3 2 pitch. Flied into left center field. Easy for John Jay. Back to his right. One out. Again, after the game, Fox Sports Live is your home for World Series post game coverage. Jay and Dan, all the highlights. Jimmy Rollins, AJ Pierzynski, they're here. Gabe Kapler and Eric Karros out in LA. They break it all down. Plus a wild finish in Detroit. Cowboys and Lions all. After the game, all of the highlights from week eight of the NFL season. It's on Fox Sports Live on Fox Sports 1. Here's David Ross with one out. 0 for 3 tonight. Strike one. The Wahara getting ready for the ninth inning and getting ready for this Calso to lead it off. He was on the mound when the game came to an end last night, but it was Brandon Workman who got the loss. One ball, one strike. Mike Napoli will hit next after Ross does something here with one out. A 1 1 pitch. Breaking ball, foul back. That's got Ross yelling at himself. He's now in the hole one and two. Here is a one two pitch from John Axford in the air to left. Biggest swing of this game. Off the bat of Johnny Gomes. 
Two on, two out. Into the Red Sox bullpen. And the celebration was on. Here's another look at that graphic. At the time of their big hit in the postseason series, the first four guys did that against the Detroit Tigers. Ortiz game two, Salta La Macchia, the walk-off single in game two, Napoli, the home run on Verlander in game three, Victorino, the grand slam in game six. And now it's Johnny Gomes who was 0 for 9 in this World Series prior to that home run to left, which made it 4 to 1. Now it's 4 2. They not only finally get a hit, they finally get a big hit. All five. One ball, one strike on Napoli. And again, it was a late switch with Shane Victorino not able to go. Scratched from the starting lineup, and that man, Johnny Gomes, took his spot. And he delivered. Been on base three times tonight with two walks and a three-run home run. Breaking ball stays up and in. Napoli, who was a part, a big part, of the pennant winning Texas Rangers two years ago. This is the two-year anniversary of the David Fries home run in game six. One of the most remarkable World Series games ever played, no doubt. And it was the man at the plate who was behind the plate calling pitches when Freeze tied that game in the ninth inning with a two-run triple to right and then won the game in the 11th. Two years ago today. Three one. Full count. He was quoted coming into this World Series talking about how hardly a day goes by that he doesn't think about. He calls a different pitch. If Nelson Cruz catches the ball in right, right. Or he would already have a ring. Something like that, believe me, stays with you for a long time. And in some ways never goes away. He says, thinking of 1968. 3 2 pitch. Foul back. Remember, we talked earlier about Jim Leland saying that Mike Napoli hits foul ball after foul ball after foul ball, and that's what gets pitch counts up. And he's right. Those are home run swings that he just fouls back. He has got awesome strength. Sends game four into the bottom of the ninth inning. Uahara will take over. This Calso set to lead it off. Red Sox down in the series. Lead tonight by two.
for the save. He's looking for number six this postseason and his first of this World Series. He's got a two run lead. Alan Craig is in the on deck circle. Daniel Descalso will try to get on for him. Descalso 0 for 2. Leading it off here in the ninth inning. A strike throwing machine is Uohara. Strike one. One walk since the All Star break. It happened in August. And he's up on the count with this council with the plate 0 and 2. The next from Koji O'Hara is an 89 mile an hour fastball. He just missed ball one. Yeah, and we've talked about it. Uh, he throws so many splits. He throws three different types of splitters down to the right, to the left. This council reaching for it grounds to Pedroia one out. That you finally get the fastball, and instead of 89 miles an hour, because of all the slower pitches, it looks to be 96 or 97. Here's Alan Craig who limps his way to the plate. When we last saw him, he got the double off Uohara last night. And then the obstruction call with him coming to the plate and for a guy who missed seven weeks with a sprained foot. The awkward slide at the plate, limping off. And the question I'm sure for the Cardinals was at what price with Alan Craig? Well, here he is the next night. Ken Rosenthal, have you learned any more about the overall health of that foot for, for Alan Craig? Joey had x-rays after last night's game. They were negative. Mike Matheny told us before the game he was ready. Craig told me he was ready, but he didn't want to say anything more. He favored that leg. He looked uncomfortable. Some of the Red Sox were skeptical that he could go, but as you said, here he is. So the count one and one. A sprained left foot in Cincinnati on the 4th of September. First game back was game one of the World Series, and he hits one into deep right. Back at the wall. It's up against the wall. And Alan Craig will make it only to first on a ball that he gets over the head of Nava and right. And Colton Wong will come off the bench and pinch run for Craig. On one leg, a long single. He can't run right now, but he can still hit. And Craig has given the Cardinals a chance. Here in the ninth inning, Wong is the pinch runner. With Carpenter up, the league leader in hits during the regular season, and Beltron with 16 career postseason home runs on deck. Still drama left here in game four. Ball one to Carpenter. Long becomes incidental. Napoli's holding him on. He almost give him second base. It's a two run lead, not a one run lead. But he's not going to try to steal. Holding him on, you're leaving a hole on the right side of the infield. That's exactly right. You could drive Mack Trucks through that right side. Pedroia towards second. Napoli holding him on. No reason to hold him on here. You've got a two-run lead, not one. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Outside, 2-1. The guy who throws a ton of strikes. And a guy at the plate who's got one of the best batting eyes in the National League and Matt Carpenter and Trevor Rosenthal gets loose. Got under it and popped it up. Shallow right, Pedroia out. Two out. And the Red Sox are one out away from tying this best of seven series. With that out for Uohara is Carlos Beltran. Now 
now they have the shift on on the infield. We saw Beltron try and bunt his way on earlier against this shift. Not now, though. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> they continue to hold against Wong. First pitch. Ball one low. Beltron with an RBI single and a walk in this game. One ball, one strike. Check on the run on the pick him off. Oh, boy. This game is over. Ohara picks off Colton Wong, and the Red Sox win it 4 2. No way can this happen. Wong, with his team down by two, makes the last out. Uahara picks him off. And Carlos Beltran is standing at the plate with a bat in his hands. And the Red Sox celebrate the victory. Talk about shocking. And Beltran, his night is finished. Game four is finished. And a stunned crowd here at Bush Stadium watches the Red Sox celebrate tying this series at two games apiece. Koji Uohara gave up the base hit and then picked off the pinch runner, Colton Wong. The winner, Dubron, the loser is Lance Lynn, and Uohara gets his sixth save of this postseason. And it ends on a pickoff down to Aaron Andrews. Thanks so much, and Johnny Gomes just came over and said, yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. Finally, a game ended the right way for you guys. Yeah, that's it. Um, emotional roller coaster here, obviously. And um, we stayed away from throwing the ball down the third baseline tonight. And uh, obviously turned over Koji. Buck answered some questions. We had Lackey out of the pin. Juby did great. Um, you're forgetting a, a part here. 90 minutes before the game, you get told you're in the lineup. Johnny, you were 0 for 9 in the World Series. What is it about this team? What is it about you picking your spots tonight, hitting a three-run home run? Well, I don't know about me, you know, I mean, since I signed up for this game, you know, all I wanted was the opportunity, you know, whether it's a pinch hit, start, um, anything, you know, I just wanted to be in the box. And um, I think it was ironic, you know, that it happened in the top of the six when we took that moment for stand up for cancer. I mean, I held two signs that were pretty close to me and everyone in here. So um, some angels above. Got any hair left on that beard? We saw them tug it pretty hard. Them boys did give a tug, but uh, I wasn't feeling much right then. Take us through that at bat in the sixth. Yeah, I mean, I take a lot of pride, you know, in the at bat in front of me and behind me. I mean, obviously, big pun, you know, it's pretty much an intentional walk. Um, expected, absolutely. But um, I, uh, you know, did what I could to give him a little protection. Um, the at bat before, I had a long at bat, was able to swing my way in time and feel able to get a strike. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, Joe, back over to you. All right, Aaron. Johnny Gomes with a celebration as he got back to the dugout after that two-out, three-run shot. And here's how the game ended with that jab step to the right. Colton Wong was out. The tag by Napoli, and this game is over. What can't happen did. And Koji Uohara, who is a strike-throwing machine, gets save number six of the postseason. And he can pick guys off, too. Let's go down to Kenny Rosenthal. Thanks, Joe. David, you were on first base when Johnny hit the three-run homer. Who was more excited, you or him? I think it was me. <laughs> you know, man, you know, uh, you just keep on telling my boys, man, you know, uh, this one time in life kind of situation. You don't come to the World Series every day, you know. And let's loosen up, you know, and let, let, let's try to uh, play baseball the way we normally do. You were very animated throughout the game, talking to your teammates. Is that what you were telling them, just to lighten up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we, we are a better team than what we had shown, you know, but uh, sometimes you get to this to this uh, stage and, and you kind of try to overdo things, and it doesn't work that way. David, you had a tough loss last night. Tonight you get four innings out of clay. You get Dubron, you get Lackey, you get Johnny, emergency starter. What does this win say about this team? I'm telling you, man, we had... We ha guys with heart you know clay he, he he brought everything he got 
I had never seen Clay throwing 88 miles an hour faster, you know what I'm saying? But he, he said the other day, I mean, I, I'm going to give you everything I got today, you know, just hand, hand tight. And he did it tonight. And, and, and see the rest of the guys coming in. Uh, um, you know, one thing that I've been trying to do is just the young guy, like like Dubro, you know, just make sure, you know, he's not over the side and, and just calm down and, and just tell him, take your time. If you don't pitch, it's not going to be no baseball game. Real quick, how about you? You locked in? Hey, this is it, man. You know, this is it. World Series. You don't get, you don't get to this level every day. David, okay. thank you very much. Right. Joe, back to you. All right, last night, two walks and a hit. Tonight, three hits and a walk. Seven straight times on base for Big Poppy. Playing first base with this World Series in the National League City. The pitching was pieced together. It was first Buckholtz, Dubron, Breslow, Tazawa, Lackey. That group good enough. So was he, Johnny Gomes. First hit of this World Series, a two-out, three-run home run. Lackey with a scoreless eighth. And the Red Sox have come to expect the scoreless ninth from Uohara. 4-2 win back after this.